What is going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So along with the data download that introduced the brand new Film Red Sugo Fest with Beckman and Lucky Roo, as well as the brand new Super Sugo Fest exclusive Shanks, there also came along the level limit breaks for five new characters and in today's video we're going to go ahead and break them down. Let's go ahead and just start this up with Sanji. V1 Sanji is going to be receiving his level limit break and a lot of people were kind of predicting this as we are expecting a brand new update for Grand Voyage and the one that is next in line is going to be the Baratier so it makes sense for Sanji to be receiving his buffs. So let's go ahead and break him down. So Sanji, uh, let's look at the captain ability. So it boosts the cruise attack by 4.5 times, health by 1.3, and then makes recovery and tandem slots have matching slot effects. And then also boosts his own attack by approximately five times. So that seems pretty stock standard, like nothing really too out of the blue there seems pretty standard to me. He does have the captain action. Remember, this is the Sanji character where you swipe downwards on him and he'll actually jump into the air. So let's go ahead and see what the Skywalk's all about. So he cannot attack right after using Skywalk, but protects character from certain status effects, which is, you know, kind of similar to Toki. He's basically non-existent uh, on the field. So that's pretty cool. He avoids like bind, despair, all of those types of gimmicks. It's pretty cool. But you cannot attack the turn you activate it. Then it does say that on the following turn, it further boosts his attack by two times on that following turn. And uh, that's pretty cool because it basically means that he himself will have a, a, a 10 times attack multiplier on that attacking turn. It's pretty absurd because that two times attack is not counted as like a buff. It's just like an inherent ability that gets activated on top of his captain ability. So it boosts his attack by an addition to 2x. He has a 5x captain. So yeah, if you can, you can synergize this well with some other really powerful units. And I can see this being super devastating against some opponents so yeah this has potential to be pretty good and considering the higher multiplies and stuff yeah th this has potential for sure let's have a look at his special ability though his part rumble stuff doesn't really matter he's pretty bad in rumble 200k damage to all enemies he's a damage dealing special so you love to see that changes all slots including block into matching previous to this he i believe he only did adjacent slots and his own slot so that's pretty good change he also boosts the chain multiplier by plus 1.4 for one turn so he that's actually really good you know and you can stack that with chain boundary effects you know not bad he also reduces the crew's decreased chain multiply growth rate chain lock burn and paralysis all by seven turns Woo! all right that's actually pretty good yeah i don't mind that at all and if this character is a captain friend captain or helper help, help captain he boosts his own base attack by 1200 for one turn well yeah i feel like if you're going to use this character on a team in most cases, you're using him for his captain ability and his captain action. So it makes sense the way that they've structured it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, th this is actually pretty good changes for what the character was kind of aiming to do. Well, he gets a crewmate ability update. Makes it, makes the crew's recovery and tandem slots have matching slot effects. Yeah, that's pretty good too. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty content with that. You know, this character is not really that good. I mean, especially in like in Rumble as well. Like 40 CT is just way too high. And, he, you know, he already has a 6 plus right now, so there's no way that his Rumble stuff is going to get super updated. So as for his base abilities, Captain ability is a good change, Special ability is a good change, you know, not too bad at all. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to purchase a bunch of dupes of him from the Suga Metal Exchange, for example, if they ever came out or if they are available. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to do that but I think that this is a character that can definitely see some play. All right, now we get into the movie legends. We have some movie characters receiving some buffs. I'm really happy to see that the movie legends are receiving some love throughout this month. So uh, here we have with Black Arm Zephyr, arguably the worst of all of the movie legends that have come out. So uh, he needs a desperate buff. And with the recent release of Beckman and Lucky Vu, this character does actually get a lot better he can synergize well with those units so let's go ahead and break this guy down now remember he does actually receive a buffed captain ability via level limit break or limit break expansion should i say so let's have a look at the base abilities that you'll get because uh, all of my movie legends are max so let's go ahead and have a look 
So he reduces cooldown by one at the start of the quest. If you have six shooters on your crew, he boosts shooters by 5x with matching slots, 4.25 times otherwise, and 10% damage reduction. Yeah, honestly, this captain ability isn't really that great still. I mean, mono shooters, you need to have six shooters on your team to get the most out of this. So I don't really think this is going to be that good. I know that he does get a lot better through his captain ability with Limit Break Plus. So if we go over to the Limit Break section, of this character and we have a look and see what this captain ability does we can see the fully buffed version so it provides the minus one cooldown at the start of the quest which is the same he will go ahead and boost shooter characters attack by approximately 5.25 when you have a matching slot 4.5 times otherwise he boosts their hp by 1.2 and then reduces damage taken by 10% and then if your crew applies a slot effect boosts with a special he extends the duration of the crew's slot effects boosts by one turn. So he actually gets a lot better because they actually remove the condition of having to have six shooters on your crew. He also provides 1.2 times health, so you get more health. You still maintain the damage reduction, which is good. And he becomes a 4.5 to 5.25 times multiplier captain. Uh, yeah, it's a lot better. So he's... he's Limit Break Expanded Captain ability is definitely more desirable, but remember at the end of the day, he's a shooter captain, so I don't know like how many people out there would really go out of their way to Limit Break Expanded characters such as this, but hey, it's, uh, it's definitely a better captain, that's for sure, definitely usable. So of course he gets the special ability upgrade as well. So let's have a look here. He reduces one enemy's HP by 30%. He boosts shooter character's attack by 2.25 times for three turns. He also adds 100 times his attack and non-type damage to your character's taps for three turns. So that's very good. And then he also changes shooter character slots, including block into matching. And then if the crew has a damage reduction status, so if you have a rainbow shield on your team, right? If you activate an effect to reduce damage with a special, um, when the special is launched, reduces all enemies defense up and damage reduction by three turns and reduces the crew's bind and despair by three turns. That is really, really bizarre. Wow. Okay. So they're saying that if you have some type of damage reduction effect, when you launch, you just get additional utility. Now this kind of makes sense because in the batch that released with Zephyr, uh, was also the rare recruit iron and she has double special activation she has damage reduction with her special so they're essentially like I, I like i like that in a way they're kind of still they're not forcing you to but they're just saying hey if you use a damage reduction effect when you use the special of zephyr then you're gonna get more out of it which i think is kind of cool um I, I you gotta remember that these characters all have the potential of receiving super evolutions as well which is only going to make them even better than what they currently are so i would say that you know if you're really looking forward to using these characters and you want to like limit break expand them it's probably better to wait to see if they get a super evolution but i mean they've already received such amazing buffs if even if they did receive a super evolution they probably wouldn't receive that many more buffs after the fact because i mean you know i just don't think that's really the case but overall zephyr's buffs are good but he's still mono shooter related and you know take that as you will because shooters they need all the help that they can really get um he obviously did get some buffs to his pirate rumble stuff as well giving shooter characters attack and hp and the less teammates available the more attack he receives to himself but then you got his special ability which provides a medium range health cut and then a small range damage so now special ability is still pretty bad in, in rumble so again with super evolution this guy actually might be very very good in rumble so again, we'll have to wait and see how that kind of progresses. The next character is Guild Tesoro. Now, the thing about this is I actually have mine at Limit Break Plus. So this is as maxed as you can possibly get Tesoro right here. Let's break him down. So Captain Ability, he boosts the amount of berries that you earn by 2.5. You know, kind of a useless ability, but it is what it is. He boosts the crew's attack by 5x, health by 1.35, and then boosts the chances of you landing on your own type slot, and boosts the crew's attack by 5.5 after landing 4 great strikes in a row, and landing a perfect strike reduces your crew's attack by 40%, so a huge drawback if you hit perfects. He then says if you have a fighter slash a striker shooter, free spirit driven, cerebral, and a powerhouse class on your team, reduces special bind and special reverse by 5 turns. So this is actually a huge upgrade to what the character is. I mean, he's still centered around hitting greats instead of perfects, which 
obviously isn't the best because it does severely reduce the amount of damage that you're doing. If you're consistently hitting perfects, you are consistently increasing your chain. This character doesn't get access to that. So that's a very big downside to this unit as a whole. And, you know, while 5x is a lot better than what he was having before, 5.5 after you hit those four greats, you know, it's fine, it's acceptable. He's still kind of weird and wacky in the way that he works. But one of the big issues with him before is that you needed to have all of those eight classes on your crew in order to actually get buffs and boosts. But now they're just saying that if you end up going out of your way to provide that on your team, then you actually just get five turns of bind and special reverse removal, or special, special bind and uh, special reverse removal. So that is actually a really unique ability, and I really like that he has that. That, but again, it's very difficult to actually get that to activate because having all eight classes on your crew is a very difficult task, especially when you have to account for, you know, all of the gimmicks that you may you know, encounter throughout a fight. So, you know, captain ability is definitely still better. Remember, that is the limit break expanded captain. The regular captain is definitely going to be at a much weaker power level. Did it actually say it here? No, this is the current one. Okay. Either way, let's have a look at the special ability. Deals 500,000 damage to all enemies. Changes top and bottom row slots into matching. Prevents top and bottom row character slots from being changed and uh, until you land a perfect strike. Okay, so yeah, the top and bottom row get matching slots. And then top and bottom row get the slot change impossible effect. You have to hit a perfect to remove it. Makes perfect sense with the character. This is actually a really good upgrade. I like that a lot because it essentially means that you'll have consistent matching slots so long as you're attacking as intended, right? That's actually very good. And then it says, if the crew lands four, well, yeah, you get a 3.5 chain lock as well. So you do have to account for that. That's a very good chain lock. And then if you hit four great strikes during the turn, you activate the special, you get a four times chain lock in the following turn. So this is, I think, the highest chain lock in the game naturally. Uh, 4x is ridiculous. And of course, there are specials that can actually buff that, but either way, uh, that special ability is very good. I think that this character um, will definitely see more play as a sub. That's a very good special ability to to, to basically get a four times chain lock if you hit those greats. And that's that's definitely achievable in a lot of different teams. It's actually pretty good. And being able to lock slots and keep them. Remember, because with slot change impossible, the opponent cannot change them away for you. So if your opponent on the last stage gives you like uh, the super block slots or whatever it is, if you have slot change impossible, you can just get around that. That's actually pretty cool. So uh, I actually don't mind that at all. And of course, in Pirate Rumble, this character actually sees play in Pirate Rumble. So let's go ahead and have a look at his abilities now. So he gives level 5 CT increase to your team. And if your HP is above 50%, he gives level 3 defense. Uh, remember that these are all going to be receiving buffs if he ever receives a super evolution. So that's what we're really banking on as well. And then he also has the special 34 CT, which is still really high. He targets enemies in a large range for 3,500. And then targets teammates in a medium range for level 7 defense for 10 seconds. Um, the fact that the defense only lasts for 10 seconds is a bit of a downer. Really wish it was uh, a little bit longer, but still, the special ability is good. The cooldown is just a little too high, but still, he's going to see play in some way, shape, or form because he's just a really good unit that synergizes with the other quick units in Pirate Rumble. All right, so now we get to my main man, Douglas Bullet. Now, Bullet is uh, is, a, is a very, very big fan favorite character in One Piece Treasure Cruise for uh, various different reasons, but uh, mainly because of that captain ability. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he gets upgraded here. He does not receive a buffed captain ability via the expanded limit break, so you will just be able to get access to it if you have enough copies. So let's go ahead and break him down. Captain ability will give you minus one cooldown at the start of the quest. He boosts the attack of strength, quick and int by 4.75 and health by one point four he boosts his own attack by approximately 5x and then makes strength quick and int characters strength quick and int slots have matching slot effects and he's super effective against all types so not really much of a surprise here his captain ability didn't really receive much of an upgrade at all the, the minus one cooldown at the start of the quest is obviously a nice touch but just with buffed numbers that's essentially all they gave him which is I, again at the, at the end of the day he's super effective against all types i don't really think they really needed to give him you know that much of an upgrade he's still going to be a very solid unit to use in content so his cooldown is like really high 15 turns i think he gets a little bit with the expansion but remember minus one cooldown with his captain ability is going to help out a lot 
So his special will go ahead and reduce the duration of all enemies Dame the Dame nullification That's the new debuff you got to be worried about <laughs> No, but that's uh, I believe that's referring to damage nullification, which is very good and also removes barriers by two. Oh That's good. That's really really good damage nullification and barrier removal by two. That's unique. Uh, I like it. I think that's actually very good. It makes really it makes a lot of sense with his special ability as well to actually just remove those effects. Yeah, that's cool. He also will reduce all enemies' health by 25%. That ignores everything. Two times his attack as damage of normal attacks. Yeah, so basically, however much damage he does with normal attacks, multiply it by two. He does that much damage at the end of the turn for two turns. And then if the crew has normal attacks only then you will go ahead and boost the attack of Strength Quicken Int by 2.5, and then boost his own base attack by 1,000 for one turn. I like that. Uh, it gives him a little bit of something some, you know, something a little bit extra, where in a lot of cases where normal attack only is present, and that's really one of the reasons why Douglas Bullet, you know, really lost uh, a lot of favor with uh, with players, is normal attack only just kind of hurt the whole design of the unit. So by making it in such a way where, you know, it, you know even though if there's no normal attacks only, you can use Bullet however you like, but if there is normal attacks only, which in a lot of cases there is, then at least you still get an attack boost out of it, a 2.5 attack boost for that too, and a 1000 base attack for himself as well. So yeah, I think uh, honestly, it's a pretty nice buff. They didn't really need to change too much with Bullet, they just needed to give him something in the situation where normal attacks only is present, and they did that as well as removing two turns of barrier and damage nullification, which are very uncommon uh, enemy gimmicks to get around. So I like that, I think they've given him pretty good upgrades. Let's check out his Pyro Rumble stuff. Um, you know, this character initially saw a lot of play when Pyro Rumble first came out, but then people realized that he's kind of bad. But anyways, Strength Quick and Int get level 6 attack and level 6 health, and level 5 attack to himself. So, you know, level 11 attack to himself is pretty good. And then his special ability, 20 CT is very low. He targets himself a level 12 attack, level 8 defense, and he provokes himself so the enemies have to target him with attacks. And he also does a large range 25% health cut. I think it's, it's, it's fine. I mean... It's it's okay. What is his actual base special ability? It's uh, an 18% reduction. So they really didn't change all that much. And it is unfortunate the bullet already has a super evolution, so we can't really expect too much um, with his with his abilities. Um, you know, overall it's fine. Um, you know, we weren't really expecting too much from Bullet considering he was already like kind of okay. But uh, it's hard to you know add too much to this unit without making him broken. Super effective against all types is always going to be a very broken mechanic. But one of the good things about Bullet is that he can synergize well with a lot of good units too. So overall, you know, I think he's okay. Not like the most broken uh, you know upgrade ever, but he seems okay. And then the final character is Stampede Luffy. Now, this is also another big one. He doesn't receive a buffed captain via limit break expansion, so everyone will get access to this at base level, which is good. Captain ability. He's going to go ahead and reduce his own cooldown by three turns at the start of the quest, boosting side decks and strength characters attack by 4.5, reduces damage by 20%, and will also boost his own attack by 5.25 times, and then makes side decks and strength slots matching to those three colors and reduces despair and paralysis by 10 turns then he has the added ability of when his health is 30 percent or below he boosts the chain multiplier growth rate by 1.2 i think that's actually a pretty unique ability to give to the character though the condition to activate it is kind of harsh having to having to be below 30 percent can be pretty difficult to get to if you're trying to get it naturally so yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a harsh condition. I wish it was below 50%. That would be way more acceptable. But at the end of the day, if you're able to abuse this in a lot of ways, you can you can do some pretty nasty stuff with this. A 1.2 chain multiply growth rate increase with a 5.2 multiply to himself can hybrid well with other good characters. Hybrids well with Yamato. You can hybrid with Roger. Like, there's just a variety of different characters you can use with this. I think it's a, it's a pretty decent captain upgrade. Like, the captain by itself was already very good because of the amazing utility that he provides. And all they really needed to do was kind of buff the numbers and give him something extra, and that's basically what they did. So, captain ability-wise, I'm not really that concerned about it, but the special ability is also something that they really needed to take a look at. So, 200 times his attack in typeless damage to all enemies. He gives himself a matching slot. Thank you very much for that. That was one of the big issues with him, is that you needed to make sure you had matching slots before you, you know 
used his special. So now that he guarantees himself a slot. Well, it actually doesn't go through block slot. So that's a bit of a missed opportunity there. That, they should have. I don't know why he just doesn't go through block. That's weird. Uh, but then he boosts his own attack and his own slot effects by 3.25 for two turns. So it's kind of like a pseudo Toki in a way. And he boosts his base attack by 1,000 for two turns as well. And he adds 0.25 times to the effect of color affinity boost that are launched after this special by side decks and strength characters for three turns. So he basically adds the plus buff where, you know, when you use his special, you get the plus buff. And then any color affinity from a side decks or strength unit is buffed by 0.25. Uh, it's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. Again, like this type of ability is then only really going to be good against uh, uh, in type enemies. Um, so it's it's fine, you know, uh, they didn't really, it, it's hard, it's hard to upgrade a special ability like this. I suppose they did it with Sanji as well, Sanji was a very self-centered unit, and I guess, you know, with Stampede Luffy, he's kind of in the same vein as that. So there's not really much else you can really do with a character like this, you know, just buffing himself with bigger numbers, I guess, is like the best thing they could have done. But, you know, in like a year, two years time, no one's really going to be using a special ability like this, right? And plus, he is a Luffy character, so it's hard to uh, to run Luffy's on cruise these days anyway, because there's so many other good Luffy's that you could be using instead of him. But realistically, he's okay. You know, he's just a good unit that we'll probably see some play here and there. He does provide rumble ability buffs to strength decks and psi characters with an attack buff. And then fighter characters get HP level 6. That's actually a very good rumble ability because a lot of the good fighters that you want to be building a team around. 6 plus Katakuri, Who is Who, the new ulti that came out recently. All of those fall under the condition of strength decks or psi. So you can actually build a pretty good team around that. Legend Jack, also a strength unit. So not a bad rumble ability. And then 35 CT is a bit high. Um, if his health is above 50%, he gives himself an attack buff and then targets enemies large range 2.5 times his attack. I mean, look, again, this is a character that doesn't have a super evolution. So in the future, Stampede Luffy could see a lot of play if he gets a really crazy super evolution. I mean, I could just... Uh, dude, this guy with a Super Evo as well, and they buff his Rumble abilities too. Man, this guy could be an absolute monster to deal with in, um, in, in Pirate Rumble, as well as regular content. So, I guess this guy could be kind of good, but really looking forward to a potential Super Evolution of this guy somewhere in the future. Who knows whenever that'll be, but that's pretty much it for all of the brand new updates for Level Limit Break. So with all that being said, that is going to wrap up yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.